There we go. There we go. It's Bourbon Night. I'm doing the intro again. <laughs> Just kidding. Happy Halloween, everyone. Um, this is my first stream since coming back from Kentucky. Um, <laughs> my cat is going crazy outside. Um, how are you guys doing tonight? Um, my software like glitched out for a second, so I wasn't sure if I was live. So I'm like, let's just let's investigate this before I go on all night without without doing it. So let me know if you guys can see me. Um, if not, <laughs> then I'll do a take three. But I think we are good to go now. Yeah, my like computers. I should have restarted. I'm doing getting some like pop ups and crap everywhere. Um, but good to see John Watson. What is up? Or uh, was it Wyoming or no W I? What is? I know I follow you on Instagram. Wisconsin, Wisconsin whiskey sipper. Hey Stephen, what's up? Um, sorry, you guys can see me now, right? Because I I thought I noticed early on that it said preview, and I'm like it should be streaming, but Wisconsin, gotcha. Yeah, I was like I said Wyoming. I'm like no, that's not it. <laughs> so um yeah, so last week I was visiting Kentucky for the very first time. I went to the It's Bourbon Night meetup. Um, the one that they did here for the booze. We got a little cute little challenge coin kind of thing going on here. Has the dates and has their logo on the back. So that was really cool. Um, got to see them, meet them in person. Um, it, it was really, really great meetup. If you get a chance to go to any of their events that they're at, um, they are just such cool people. And I kind of expected it to be more like they'd be like presenting and like we'd just be like, all watching on and occasionally talk to them but no it was super interactive we all just shared pours and it was just a really great time but that was the first part of my trip the second part i actually did some exploring on my own and went to go see a few different distilleries so i thought tonight i would taste through some of the things i picked up um share some experiences with some of my favorite distilleries some of my like least favorite ones and yeah talk to you guys about because i'm sure some of you have visited how many of you here now have visited kentucky before and visited some distilleries i know steven you said earlier that you had um it was like i said it was my first time so i tried to get in as much as possible yeah so first thing i'm going to pour tonight is one of the first things i bought when i got in kentucky because what i want to do is um, get some of the exclusives, even the cheap stuff that you can't get anywhere else or very few places. And the first thing I got was JTS Brown Bottled and Bond. This 1.75 liter handle was $22. So if that tells you anything, but it's Bottled and Bond. So I've heard good things. I also picked up a, J <clears throat> a JW Dant. Um, I've opened both of these already because they were like the first things I wanted to try when I got home. Um, but yeah, so I feel like this is a good place to start where since it's where I started my trip. So just kind of pour a glass. Um, John has been there twice going back in spring. Oh, nice. Yeah, this was I want to do this more often. I want to do it like every um, maybe not every year. We'll see. But at least every two years for sure. So, um, yeah, this smelled really good when I opened it. And then Stephen, you, you visit as many as you could in a week. Yeah, same here, man. I was there for thursday through tuesday so less than a week but got a lot in so and i just dropped my lid Ugh. off to a good start um yeah so i i did it so i did a couple of things i went to the staples i went to like buffalo trace jim beam heaven hill all that stuff but i also want to check out a few of the smaller distilleries um i went to castle and key that was actually the first distillery i visited um I guess go ahead and get into it. I was going to like go through my list of what I did, but um, I think I can share my photos with you guys here. Let me let me pull this up. Well, first of all, you guys know Perry and Swan. I met up with them for dinner, had a wonderful time um, going over to their place and drinking and trying a lot of new things. Um, that's actually where my next bottle that I'll drink after this one came from. So Swan, the bourbon finder on Instagram, found me this WB Saffle, which... I don't know why, but it hasn't made it to California. I've looked. I've looked all over. All we have is Bond and Lillard. Um, so I've been looking out for that one. It's just readily available there. So I'm like, grab that for me. And he did. So thanks. Follow him on Instagram. He um, finds some really cool stuff. So this is the JTS Brown, though. So it's on the nose. You do get a lot of alcohol burn, which, I mean, again, it's it's, it's cheaper. It's a cheaper bourbon. Um, but there is a lot of nuttiness. Like it's doesn't really have the oakiness that normally I associate nutty and oaky in similar profiles. 
Um, but this one doesn't have much of the oakiness at all. It's just like sweet and like, I would say peanut butter. I would almost say peanut butter. Um, Brandon, all good, Brandon. I, I know you said you'd be late today. No worries. Um, so let's go ahead and taste the JTS Brown. Because I think I think the um, the 750 milliliter bottle was like 14 or 15. Um, but I saw this one was plastic, which makes it easier to travel with. I don't have to worry about it busting. So I grabbed this one. Oh, yeah, super light. It doesn't drink like 100 proof. I mean, it, it has a little bit of the burn on the finish, but like on the palate, it's just, it's not the best sipping whiskey, I would say. It's super approachable. If you're someone that's not really into whiskey and you're in Kentucky, grab this one. I mean, it's not an 80 proof, so it's going to have a little bit more kick to it, but flavor wise, it's an all around classic bourbon. And you guys know I hate using the term classic bourbon, but. When I'm describing a $14 whiskey, I think I'm allowed to say a classic bourbon. Um, but it does kind of, the nuttiness kind of pops out a bit. Um, it's really enjoyable. It's actually from Heaven Hill. Um, both of these are actually from Heaven Hill, the JTS Brown and the JW Dant. Side by side, last night, I preferred the um, Dant to this one. Um, but they were both, they were different. They were very, very different. I was surprised by that. That's a good point, Stephen. It's to start your night kind of for... Totally agree with that. Or one that, you know, I would even, I mean, I think this would hold up super well in cocktails. 100 proof. I mean, I don't, I don't like making cocktails with anything much under 100 proof. I think I want the whiskey flavor to stand out. And I think with this nuttiness of this one, I think this would make a really good, um, even an old fashioned, like if you get some like walnut bitters or something, I think this is a good one to go to. So I'll find lots, I'll find plenty of uses for this for $22. So yeah, but it's, it's super good. I mean, that's super good, super good considering the price. What are you guys sipping on tonight? Any Kentucky exclusives or things exclusive to your state? Um, I don't have very much exclusive to California. There's a couple of small distilleries, but most of them source um, from MGP, so it's not like that special. Um, I do want. I watched the Whiskey Vaults video on a San Diego distillery. I haven't had anything from there yet, um, but I, I would like to try some of their products. Um, I, I know they're. I think I. I was going to go to their distillery, but then I watched a video of their tour and it looked like it sucked, so I didn't go. But I definitely need to give them a shot next time in San Diego. Um, got some Rare Breed, got some New Rift Pick that I picked up in Kentucky. Oh, nice. I um, So I would have got a New Rift Pick while I was there. I actually just ordered two New Rift Picks and they got here like two days before I left for the trip. So I was good on the New Rift front. I wasn't able to make it to the New Rift distillery. I know Ian, um, he went there twice, so a lot of people... Um, Got a chance to go to that. It just didn't fit in my time frame, um, but I love the product. So the first distillery I went to, um, maybe this will work. We'll see. Oh, there we go. So I went to, I feel like I'm giving a presentation. <laughs> so we went to Castle and Key, and this was me, Ian, and uh, my husband, Justin. And we, let me center that for you guys. Yeah, so we did the tour there, like the full, I think they call it the Castle and Key experience. Um, so we went through, let me see if I can do this right here. Yeah, so. I think this is like a mix of my photos and videos. So if, if a video starts to play, I'll just skip it. Unless it's something interesting. But um, yeah, so Castle and Key is like a really historic distillery. They basically are the property of the old Taylor Distillery. So um, super old. One of the oldest properties I think we saw. But the tour there was really cool. Um, the guy was really fun. And it started off my trip right. Like it, it felt very much like I wanted a distillery tour to feel like. It was just... Um, I'm not going to show you guys all these photos. I'm just going <laughs> just gonna to scroll through them quickly. This is part of like the old distillery there. Um, and they still haven't renovated all of it yet. So, yeah, really cool distillery. Um, we got to try some cocktails. Maybe they don't, their bourbon and their rye aren't ready yet. Um, but we did get some cocktails made with their gin. And they have a special release autumn gin, um, which is this one right here. And I'm not a gin drinker, but the cocktail that that one made was really good. So, Pretty big fan of that one. I, um, like I said, I'm not a gin drinker, but I appreciate what they're doing. And they talked a lot about their bourbon. That's what I was most excited about. I thought they were going to make it all about their gin. It was all about their bourbon and their rye that they're making. So super excited to see what comes from them next. Um, like I said, I don't have, don't have a product out yet, but they are doing it right. And they're waiting until their stuff is aged long and um, just in a good place before they release it. And I really do respect that. So. If you guys get a chance to visit Castle and Key, definitely do. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it just was a really fun one. So, yeah, so next we had some time to kill before we went to the Chad and Sarah meetup. So my husband and I went off to try to hit as many 
distillery as near Frankfurt as possible. So we went to Wild Turkey. Um, that was when we had a scheduled tour at. The tour itself, my honest first opinion of the tour, which Ian kind of warned me about this ahead of time, it's very corporate. <laughs> the The tour is like set up, there's like rooms built for the tour, not built for like being a functioning distillery. So the tour, I mean, the guide was great. It was fun. Um, but my favorite part of the tour at Wild Turkey was meeting Jimmy Russell. I didn't have that picture pulled up, but I met Jimmy Russell Bought him, I figured I wasn't planning on buying anything in the gift shop, honestly, because like I've had pretty much everything from Wild Turkey. Um, but you know, when he walks, he, he slowly walks his way in the door. I saw him get out of his car and it was like a very slow walk, but hey, he's earned it. So yeah, I had to go. I just grabbed this. I wanted to buy something that would be not tempting um, to drink. So I could have got Russell's Reserve, but I would have been tempted to drink that one. So I got, of course, a little mini bottle of Wild Turkey 101, something that I can get readily. It's one of my favorite budget whiskeys, and it's a nice little keepsake. I don't think I'll open this unless there's a special occasion. Maybe I either, like, share a glass with Jimmy or I don't know. <laughs> I'm just making something up. But, yeah, I, I wanted to get something that I would want to treasure more than drink, and I definitely wouldn't want to do that with, like, a full price bottle because I like drinking whiskey. So I'm going to move on. Since we're talking about Wild Turkey, I'm going to move on to the WB Saffle. I haven't actually tried this yet, so this will be an uncorking for you guys. It's an Bourbon Night shirt. Um, so let me get one last sip of the JTS Brown. Again, start your night bourbon. That's what I did tonight. So, ooh, that would have broke. So let's go to the Saffle. Have you guys had this one yet? This one I've heard is like one of the best small releases from... Um, I guess it's not technically wild turkey. It is wild turkey juice, but I don't think they, they advertise it as, oh, that's cute. They advertise it as the American Medicinal Spirits Company. Um, it's produced by, I'm pretty sure, Campari. So it's the company that owns wild turkey, but um, this is actually a vintage label. They kind of repurposed and brought back, and they involved the master distillers at wild turkey with it. So Brandon, what's up? Um, not much. I just was giving a quick recap of like going to Castle and Key and um, meeting Jimmy Russell and getting him to sign a bottle, um, which is just this Wild Turkey 101, but I wanted something that I could keep on the shelf and not feel guilty about. So that's pretty much it. So we're opening the the WB Saffle now. So you try it at the distillery. Oh, so oh, you did like a taste tasting of it at the bar. We were in such a rush, we didn't even stop by the bar. We did the tasting, like the general tasting experience, but um, yeah, we, we wanted to get out of there and head to a couple other ones before we had to meet up with everybody. So, but yeah, I've heard, I've heard this is a lot of people's favorites. Sorry, I'm struggling to get it open. <laughs> the plastic like didn't come off in one piece. So it's like halfway on the bottle. One second, technical difficulties. What the hell? It's like, don't wait, it's double wrapped. It has two layers of plastic on it. Why? That's weird. Maybe it's just like a bad, um, yeah. So uh, that wasn't, um, uh, was that JW Dent? It was. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't Dent. It was JTS Brown. Um, the Dant, I didn't bring out, but I did like that one a little better than JTS Brown. Just FYI, they're cheap enough to buy both of them. But, um, yeah, I was going to drink the Dant as my, like, in Kentucky bourbon, like, to have something to drink. But I ended up, um, wanting to take it home because I didn't want to open it up. Because once you open a bottle, you can't really travel with it on a plane. So, um, ended up just drinking some Russell's Reserve that I brought to share with everybody. Yeah, JTS Brown is good. It's very nutty. Um, it's, I wouldn't say it's my favorite thing. I wouldn't want to sip on it too much. Steven said earlier that it's like a start your night kind of bourbon. Totally agree with that. Um, I love the nutty profile. I think with the high proof, it would hold up in a cocktail really well, especially something when you have like um, some walnut bitters or something like that. I think it would do really, really well. So, but this is my first time trying the Saffle. I'm really excited. I've been looking for this bottle forever. I just kept waiting for it to come to California and it never did. So I had to get Salon the Bourbon Finder to pick me up a bottle. I'm pretty sure it was probably at the distillery too, honestly. Um, but I wanted to be guaranteed. I didn't want to be searching all over for it. I just wanted to find it. So he had it ready for me when I got there. So let's go ahead and pour it. I think this is a hundred proof too. I'll double check. I want to pour more of it, but it's such a little bottle. Um, this is, oh, I tripped it all down the label. <laughs> oh, well, doesn't matter. I don't keep bottles for the label. So this one is 53.5 proof. Okay. So it's, it's higher proof than I thought. Um, but it's just in this little 375 and this was 50 bucks. So got to treasure every last drop of it. So, and as I spill it all over my desk, you get the point. <laughs> um, 
Oh yeah, the nose on that one's way more interesting than the dant, obviously. Price point is a huge reason that is. Um, gosh, this much, if it was in, in the handle size, this would end up being like, what, 50, 100, like 175, $200 whiskey. That's crazy. Let's see if it, I mean, I don't buy, I honestly have only bought a handle of Larceny once, and that was just to, um, I was going to put it down in one of those two liter barrels to age it. So I don't buy that much. I like to buy smaller bottles and try a lot of variety versus stack, stocking up on one thing. So on the nose, um, so it's been a while since I've had some of Wild Turkey's higher proof offering. I've had the Wild Turkey 101, but it, it's a little, I guess, off profile for Wild Turkey. Like on the nose, I wouldn't guess that. I would almost guess like a Heaven Hill on the nose. A lot of like caramel sweetness that I don't usually get on Wild Turkey. There's that spice though, that, that very familiar spice. So let's go ahead and try it. I So a little bit about the history of this. Let's see if they put it on the back. Uh... Yeah, it just says they opened a distillery in 1889, but this is supposedly based on the original recipe, so. Also nutty. That does not drink, like, that high of proof. Honestly, that drinks lower proof than that 100 proof I just had, and this is 107 proof. Wow. Oh, that finish, though, too. It's super long finish for such a relatively low um, proof. That flavor though, it like, it keeps going and like in a really good direction. It almost gets a little like bitter at the end. So there's a lot more oak in it than the brand TTS Brown, but um, it's really sweet. I gotta go in for a second sip. Chris, what's up? Um, yeah, I, I had a great time. I was thoroughly impressed. I was actually surprised I was able to do everything I wanted to do. like. Did not anticipate that happening. There were a couple times where I almost messed something up and missed something, but I ended up sorting it out. So I'll get to those in a second. <laughs> this, um, yeah, this is really, really nice. This is, I haven't had the Bond and Lillard, but I've heard rumors that this is the best one. It really is. It's not anything like super different. It's very familiar, but not in a bad way at all. The way it sits on the finish, like not quite like the lingering finish, but like once it starts transitioning to the finish, it's very reminiscent of Wild Turkey 101, which is one of my favorite budget whiskeys. So very happy about that. That's a really good one. Like I said, if you put this in a 750 milliliter bottle, it'd be $100. I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's up there in, in terms of things that I normally pay for, but I think it's, that finish is still going. I think that I would say it's worth it. Absolutely. And especially, I mean, I highly recommend picking up one of these if you see them. It's like 45 to $50, um, which is a little pricey for something so small, but I think you'll realize why it's priced so high because it's very, very special stuff and I don't want to pour it out. So I'm going to take a while and sip a while on this. So yeah, so we went to Wild Turkey and we were going to try to run down to Four Roses and do a tasting there, not the tour, but a tasting. But um, we ended up being too late. We were like 10 minutes too late for that. So it was okay. It, honestly, I've tried all of their base products. I think I'm fine not doing the tasting. Um, so we just walked around their gift shop. And then we headed to Woodford. This is all in the same little area. So it literally was not much driving at all. Um, went to the, the, the grounds. I've heard the grounds at Woodford are beautiful. They are, but they're not really like... It's not like you're on the grounds of the distillery. It's like farmland that's like, is this the distillery or is it a farm? So it's a little confusing, but it's really, really pretty out there. And especially it's just now turning fall. So the fall leaves were amazing. Um, uh, no surgery needed on the, at the moment. Awesome. Great to hear. See a surgeon for your ankle. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad you're getting better. That's That sucks. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's improving, man. Uh, yeah, so went to Woodford. They actually were still doing tastings. So on an impulse, I was like, oh, I don't want to not do a tasting. And I've heard that they're on their back porch and it's going to be so pretty. So I, I did a tasting at Woodford. Um, it was just their Woodford Reserve standard release, their double oak and their Woodford rye. So I have had all those before. So that's kind of why I was like, ah, did I just pay like $12 for a tasting of these? But the way that the Woodford guide went through the tasting, I think was the best so far and probably one of the better guided tastings I had on the trip. 
he walked through, I mean, obviously they all did like the, you know, the Kentucky chew and the tap it on your tongue a little bit at first, but the way he talked through the flavor wheel and the flavor profiles, none of the other distilleries did that. So I thought that was really cool, especially if you're someone that's new to bourbon, um, which a lot of people at the Woodford tour were. Like there was one girl, she's like, I'm a Woodford girl. The only thing I've ever had is Woodford. I even got a shirt. So I was like, okay, well, this is a good experience for her to kind of see why she likes Woodford. Me personally, Woodford's not my favorite. I, um, so I think the thing they try to do the most with Woodford is make it balanced. I sometimes want something a little unbalanced. I want like some flavor things shooting off in other directions, like that Dan or the JTS Brown. Uh, I get it confused too. Um, it has that nuttiness like shooting out, and I like that. So yeah, so I think it, it, it was a very nice tasting. So basically, that was it for the um, our own stuff that day. Then we went to meet up with Chad and Sarah at dinner at the Stave. Um, highly recommended. The food was really really good, and they have really nicely curated flights so the one that i did was i did a um uh not, what is it not stitzel weller um willet i did a willet flight because i'm actually the only willet products i've ever had is their high-end stuff um i've never had their lower end stuff so i had the willet pot still it had the um i think it was old bardstown i think that's a willet brand um don't quote me um and then it had either noah's i think it had noah's mill either way i really enjoyed it because i had never had any of those products before so um it was a really great way to do it i even did a rye flight too so it was a really great time having dinner with them um, but then we went to buffalo trace and we did a buffalo trace ghost tour you guys that was a lot of fun it was definitely broke up the not monogamy mono, monogamy monotony of um distillery tours but it um was just really cool seeing the history of it hearing about these people that walk the same grounds we're walking on right now and whether or not their ghosts are still there, that's debatable. But, um, yeah, so that it was just a really fun tour. Our guide was great. Um, and the tasting at the end, I had never tried their bourbon cream, even though I have a bottle of it. Really, really good. So really recommend that. And then that was pretty much it for the day on Friday. Yes, Friday. And we went back to their hotel. Um, we were actually staying at an Airbnb. Um, funny story about my Airbnb um some of you guys may already know this but i got there and someone's stuff was all over the airbnb like there was dishes in the sink there was a half finished bottle of wine on the table there was clothes scattered all over the bed i tried calling the host no answer basically long story short she called me back later profusely apologizing saying that she was staying there she forgot that she had an airbnb tonight i'd already gotten a refund from airbnb because i was pissed i was like am i getting scammed right now but she was super apologetic and actually let me stay there for those three days for no cost to me. Um, she's like, I feel terrible about this, so you you can stay here and like no worries. I even offered to pay for like two of the three nights because I did kind of feel a little bad, and she did clean it up for us, by the way. So, but yeah, it was just it was just really kind of her to let us stay there. So that's that word itself out. But um. I'm just looking at the photos, see if there's anything interesting to share from that. Not, not really. I mean, it's it's pretty much... I'll, I'll go to the screen just so you can see um, just this quick overview. There we go. So, yeah. So, we did, like, the ghost tour here. Um, I took a couple pictures trying to catch ghosts. and never was able to catch them, but <laughs> um, I had to try. And then we went back to the hotel. Um, there's no audio on this right now, but... Yeah. So, we did, like, tasting at the hotel. Um... Got to try a lot of really cool things. Um, yeah, so it was just a great time. So that, that was our first night there. Sorry about the traffic noise outside. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much it for day one. Day two was when we went to Bardstown. So we all gathered. We all got on a tour bus, and we drove down to Bardstown on Saturday. So we had three stop, basically three stops for the day. We went to... Um, 1792 um barton distillery we just did a tasting there those oh those pies yeah i'll get to those pies that, that's for that's for that day so um so yeah we um basically leading into the pie story sarah the night before she was like um oh butterscotch pie is so good and we were like what's butterscotch pie i've never heard of it and most people were like well, we never heard of it she's like oh my gosh we got to go to mammy's kitchen so we ended up stopping there to get the pies so yeah so but we started the day off we went to um uh, I always forget the name of the one, Barton1792, just did a tasting there. Um, our, our tasting guide was really great. 
Um, but then we went to go get some pies at a place called Mammy's Kitchen. Um, so we got a chocolate one and a butterscotch one. And they were really good. I mean, it wasn't what I expected. I thought it was going to be more like a pumpkin pie, but it was more like a custardy pie. Um, but it was very, very good and very... It paired very nicely with bourbon, so it was a, it was a very good, very good treat along the way. But then um, the next distillery we visited, which was one that I didn't expect to like as much as I did, um, mainly because it seemed super corporate. Um, have you guys? I'm curious if have any of you guys been to Lux Road Distillery or Lux Co. is what they used to be called. Um, I'd heard of them. I knew they make Rebel Yell. I knew they um, put out a special distillery only release. Um, but I, this is about it I know. I, I knew they did the David Nicholson, um, which I had never tried before. Um, but I didn't know very much about them. But I was super excited when not only was like our tour really great, but the wife of the like president of the company was there. She's a creative director. And she kind of walked us through the experience. It wasn't even like planned. She just happens to show up like one time a month or something. And she was there and she kind of talked us through like their thought process with this distillery. And um, the tour is amazing. Like it's so technological. They have a really cool intro video, super epic, like sizzle kind of going, <laughs> like real going out at the beginning. It, it was a really nice um, artsy. I would say that's like the most artsy of the tours. A lot of video elements, a lot of photos. Um, as you can see in this photo here, they have like a photo wall of like things that represent their different aspects of the distilling. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I, I found a lot of videos of the mash just like doing this little bubbly thing. But um, yeah, it was a, it was actually way better than I thought. So see, like I said, it's very modernized. Their um, warehouses are huge, as you can see in this photo. <laughs> they they And right now, basically, they're things that they have out right now. Um, they're sourcing so they actually haven't put out any of their own product yet so I'm super excited to see where they go from there um, <laughs> try to jump in the mash no but I did get to taste it I was I was really hoping someplace would let us taste it and they did I don't know if that was for the better or for the worst because some of them I so the mash that was being put in to begin with was great though the stuff that had been fermenting for a few days not so good so um, but we ended up doing a tasting, and the tasting was halfway guided by, um, I forget her name, but she's the, like I said, she's the creative director there. She's the wife of the owner of the company. So um, it was just a really nice tasting, and um, my first time trying their products, honestly. So I ended up walking home with a bottle of Rebel Yell 100. So I'd only had the basic Rebel Yell before. Um... I did like the other releases. I liked. I tried Blood Oath there. I paid twelve dollars and tried Blood Oath, and I tried their new, their twelve-year-old double-barreled release they put out. Fantastic whiskeys, outside of my price range, one hundred fifty, two hundred dollars, too much for me, especially at that point in my trip. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go home with something I can't find out here yet. Um, this was twenty-two dollars. It's probably gonna be a little cheaper once it actually hits the market. Um, but I figured I would open that up and try that with you guys. Have you guys had this one? Um, the hunter proof. It's not the same as regular Rebel Yell. Don't I know people have Rebel Yell has a bad reputation, but this one is um, hunter proof. I believe it's older too. So, um, but yeah. So I, I I haven't actually tried this yet. Peerless did let me try the match. Um, yeah, I told you earlier. I, I think Peerless was probably one of my favorite. But I'll get to that in just a second. It's the next day. So I did Peerless the day after. So that was the Saffle. Saville, highly recommended. Where's my glass though, since this is a weeder? Don't want to have influence. Yeah, but this was only $22. Right now they're sourcing from Heaven Hill. So this is basically a higher proof larceny. Not sure on the aging. I'm not sure if this is aged longer or less than larceny. But I'm excited to give it a try though. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard good things about it too. Actually, I've heard that it's worlds better than the original Rebel Yell, but we'll see. There's like some weird like my cork is like making a noise. Hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. It's like making a bubbly noise. That's weird. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was not expecting there to be a noise coming out of my cork. Um. 
Yeah, but yeah, I was very, very impressed with Luxro, um, and I'm excited to see what they do next because they're they're just they seem very passionate about what they're doing. On the nose, this smells really good. Yeah, it's the pressure, especially because I I flew home with these and I didn't have a single bottle break. Um, had a little leaks with my Elijah Craig grenades, which I also think I want to try tonight. We'll see, but nothing major, just a little leaking out of the top of it. So. Let's go ahead and give this a try. It smells really good. It smells, I mean, it smells like a weeded bourbon. It almost smells a little sweeter than Larceny. Larceny, I think, is very bready. This has a lot more of the caramel, caramely goodness going for it. Yeah, I, Brandon, both you and Stephen both said that they would leak. So I put them down in Ziplocs. I, it didn't make a mess or anything. I just noticed there was some leakage in the Ziplocs, so... Yeah, thank you guys for those tips. That's super, super helpful. <laughs> um, I put down some of the more expensive bottles in like leak-proof bags as well because I was really worried about them, but I had good luck with them. Wow, that is really good. Sorry, I just got distracted, but like that Rebel Yell 100 proof, it, the finish isn't nearly as long as the Saffle, but it's like my thing with weeders is a lot of times I don't feel like they're super well balanced. Um, I feel like they need some extra something going for them to keep them balanced. Like with Makers, I think Makers 46, that extra oak staves to help us round it out. And then even like Weller's Special Reserve, I'm not the biggest fan on. It just leans in one direction and just doesn't go anywhere. This though, it's really, it's like a, it's more of like a baked good. You get that um, pastry, not even like bready. Like normally I get like a breadiness. Um... But it's almost like a like a baked good. It has like a caramel coating over a pastry. That's, I mean, compared to regular Rebel Yell, which is like a mixer maybe at best, um, which again, Rebel Yell, regular Rebel Yell is super cheap. My store has them two for $20 right now. So not dissing on it, but this is, this actually might be one of my new favorite sipping whiskeys um i was trying to categorize down like what my favorite rye would be my favorite high rye my favorite weeded bourbon um and i would say that i was saying before that i thought makers 46 was my favorite weeded bourbon just like a everyday sipper um i think this beats makers 46 i'll have to my husband's super into makers 46 so i definitely want to have to give him this one and give him let him have a try of it i think this is probably my favorite weeded bourbon other than like the cast strength and the private selects. I mean, because those are next level. But you, you know what I'm saying. Like, they did say they're going to do a Rebel Yell single barrel and it's going to be like 117 proof eventually when they release their own stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Chris says, We told you you would be okay. You just need to tape down the corks by wrapping the bottle vertically as well as around the bottle and neck to provide strength for transport. Funny enough, um, I actually didn't tape down any of the corks. I probably should have. Um, I just had these inflatable, I don't have them in here with me, but they're those inflatable, like you pump air into them bags. Um, and they just like slide down into it and there's like padding all over. So next time I probably should tape down the corks on, especially the pricier bottles, but I got fortunate that nothing happened and there wasn't too much pressure. So, um, Makers 101 was fantastic. Yeah, I, I would love to try that one. Um, not a huge fan of the regular cast strength, but, um, I, I, I do like Maker's, like, private selects, so. Yeah, I, I need to give him both blind to get his thoughts on him. Favorite special pour you got to try? Um, so I would say, so I'll, let me go to Heaven Hill. Well, no, I need to, I need to kill time because I want to open this bottle. <laughs> um, so favorite special pour. Well, I'll go ahead and talk about Heaven Hill just because I, I I'll get to where I had my favorite pour. So after Luxco, we went to Heaven Hill. We just did the regular tour there. The tour was okay. Um, I'm just a huge fan of Heaven Hill products, so I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just trying to keep an eye on my time to make sure I hit everything. But Heaven Hill tour was probably one of my least favorites, to be perfectly honest. The guide was great. It just felt super basic. We didn't even... No, no, never mind. That was another one. That was the... um. One of them, we didn't even go in the Rick House at all, and I thought it was really odd. Um, don't remember which one that was. I'll, I'll get to it in a second. But yeah, Heaven Hill, it was it was okay. But the next thing we did was we went down to 
Bardstown Bourbon Company for dinner. Now this was probably one of the highlights of my trip. So the meal itself was extremely expensive, um, but I would say, well, there's spoilers here. Hold on. Okay. I would say it's worth it. So basically went up to their private dining area upstairs and they had a bar with a few dusties pulled out for us. They had like a 1960s um, chess piece. Um, I forgot which distillery. I think it was Old Crow. They had um, this right here, which was a J.W. Dant um, Old Bourbon from 1980. It was an 80 proof. Um, they were, had that for like $7 a pour. Um, oh, they, they, there's spoilers. So anyway, so they had some cool things up there, but Perry told us that they have some pretty special stuff back at the downstairs bar. So we went down to the bar and we were like, hey, um, can we see your whiskey list? And we started flipping through it. And yeah, there was, there was one guy in our group that had a lot of money for some reason. Um, I don't know the specifics, but he was looking for something really special. So basically they offered us to take us into their vault, which was basically a back kitchen room. So we went back to their vault, <laughs> which as you can see in this photo, there are tons and tons of amazing old bottles of whiskey. You can see some like there's just some crazy dusty turkeys. They have some old or some Booker's Rise, some old label McKenna. They have Evan Williams single barrel from pretty much every year. Pappies. They just had so much. So we went back there. Um, they pulled out a couple bottles. Um, I don't. We didn't end up taking either of these. Um, I think the prices were just a little too high for most of us. Um, I'm cheap. I didn't get any expensive dusties, but I got some of them. Um, this one, they actually brought down for us. So this one's special to me because this was a birth year. This was a 1993 bottle. Um, both my husband and I were born in 93. So, and they were only selling it. It was only like $7 a pour. So yes, we took two pours of that because why not? We had to have a birth year bottle. Um, so yeah, she went through the whole whiskey book. These are the ones we decided to bring upstairs. Um, so there was the old Bardstown from 1993. There was a wild turkey. I think it was from 1987. Um, some, somewhere around that price range. A William Heaven Hill, um, which apparently was Chad's um, from It's a Bourbonite. Basically, he has a bottle of it that he doesn't want to open. So the guy offered to buy him a pour of it. And it was like $150 a pour. Something crazy. Mictors, which is from their old distillery. Um, old, old label Mictors. And William LaRue Weller Hazmat. So that was like 141 proof. So as you can see, Chad really <laughs> was eyeballing the was eyeballing eyeballing those. So basically, we took them all back upstairs. Um, so you'll probably see this. Like Sarah filmed Chad drinking. Oh, you do, Chris. Well, maybe you. He was talking about he had a bottle of it that he hadn't opened. So they had to do like a live uncorking of it. Um, it was actually he was the first one to get a pour from it, so it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that was just really cool to watch. This was the dinner. Very very good. Pricey but great, great quality steak. Probably some of the best steak I've had. Um, this was just some of the bottles they had on display. Some amazing things that I would love to have, but I'm sure way too pricey for us. Um, okay, so this, so Steven, your question about best pours of the night. So let me go back to me. There I am. Okay, so I would say some of the best pours I had on this trip. One, not even that it was that great of a pour itself, um, but that old Bardstown from my birth year, that was really special to me because I've always wanted to try a Dusty from my birth year. Um, and they had another one there. They had, they had a Evan Williams single barrel, which was a vintage 1993 barrel. Um, I was already, by the time I had that old Bardstown, I'd already had a couple pours. So I'm like, I'll save this for my next trip. Um, but they did have an Evan Williams 1993 single barrel. So next time I'm there, I'm going to have to give that one a try, but so that was special in terms of sentimental, but in terms of best special pour. So back at Heaven Hill, you know the guy I talked about with money? He um, he bought a bottle of, well, okay, we all kind of chipped in a little bit, but he bought a bottle of the newest William Heaven Hill, the $250 one. Um, I think it's like 11-year bourbon or 12-year bourbon. He bought a bottle of it, and with one, like, incentive. we He had to open it on the bus and share it with everyone, so... I got to try the new William Heaven Hill, which I would not buy a bottle of it because it's so expensive for me. But I described it to someone else. It tasted like the best Elijah Craig I'd ever had. Now, that's saying a lot because you guys know I love Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, but it 
was so incredible. I don't know I would pay $250 for it personally because I'm not a baller, but probably one of the best whiskeys I've ever had in my life. It was like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, but like finessed in like a perfect way. So highly recommend that if you get a chance to try it. Um, it's going to be expensive, but if you get a chance to try it, it's going to be great. Um, we also had a Blanton straight from the barrel, which was really good. I also had a chance to try, of course, Chad and Sarah's pick of Knob Creek. Um, I want to get in focus. You can see the awesome label there. Hold on. I think it's trying to focus on me. Oh, come on. It's struggling with focus right now, but... Anyways, it says a mash made in heaven. This was their wedding bottle. They had this at their wedding. Um, yeah, and they signed it for us. So their pick was really good. Um, yeah, so I was reading the conversation with Brandon and Chris. Um, yeah, so it is, uh, it's actually one of the, it's a 13 year pick. So it's an older pick, but this is really good. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't that far out of line with other Knob Creek picks I've ever had. It was right in line with them, and I think that's what was great about it. I mean, it it's it's an awesome Knob Creek pick, and it's super special to me because it was their pick. So I tried it the the tasting. Um, I'm not gonna open this bottle for a while because I have like four or five other Knob Creek picks sitting there not open. <laughs> so I, I need to get through those first. But um, yeah, so that was really fun. And yes, Brandon, yes, if you're here, I'll I'll open it up and share it with you. Um, by the way, I also, I mentioned earlier, Swan got me the bottle of WB Saffle. He also got me an old label bottle of, um, Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. So Brandon and I are, gonna, are supposed to split that one. So yeah, when you're here, we can do that. So let me, okay. I'm getting behind cause I only have 15 minutes left. Okay. So I might pass up the, okay. I'll give you guys a choice at the end, which one I want to try. Oh wait, no, no, there's only one more to try. Okay. I'm still good on time. You know why I said that? So basically, after I left Chad and Sarah, we spent the next few days exploring on our own. We went to the Jim Beam American Stillhouse, beautiful grounds, favorite grounds so far. Um, the tour was good. We so Brandon, you and I talked about this before. Um, before they went around with Knob Creek and they would slowly door, dump dump it, and you're supposed to like put your hands out and try it. They don't do that anymore. They basically walk around with the glass. And you dip your finger down in it. And you only can do one finger. So you, you so basically, they dump a barrel into a glass. And then you, like, do this. So I was, I was like, I had been practicing. I'm like, how am I going to get the most in my hand? But, um, yeah, so it's just a finger. But you do do that and then taste it really way better than I thought it was going to be. It was, I mean, it could have just been because I taste good. I don't know. I was being weird. But, um, no, it was just, it was very, very good. And, God, if they release a straight from the barrel Knob Creek, I'd buy in a heartbeat. Because even at 120 proof, he said um, that's basically the minimum their single barrels come out as. They sometimes go up to 140 proof, like if it were straight from the barrel. So, God, I would love to try that. I did not ask. Um, I didn't want to be like, oh, I last time they did this, you know. So, but no, it it was still fine. Um, I still got to try it. So I did, I did get that experience. But didn't get as much as I wanted because I wanted to just like sip on it so much so yeah when did Jim Beam um it, the tour was pretty good I didn't buy a bottle you could bottle your own Knob Creek but it was like just a regular single barrel nothing special about it so did that um went back to this is when we went to Louisville we checked into our hotel we went to the Evan Williams speakeasy experience which by the way I highly recommend um the Evan Williams experience by itself normally would probably be pretty lame but their little speakeasy thing they have set up um, it's really cool. They're totally in character. The guy hosting it was really fun. And we got to try some really nice pours. We got to try the Evan Williams 12-year-old, um, which is like $125 at the gift shop. We got to try the new Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, um, which is the C919, which, by the way, spoiler, guys, it's really good. I'd have to try it side by side with some of my favorites, but it's it's a really, really good um, batch of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, and then we tried, what was it? it was another, oh, it was Pikesville. We tried Pikesville. I think that may have been one more. I'm not sure. But the 12 year, so the 12 year surprised me. Um, I thought it would be overhyped and like not good at all. But it, I probably did like it more flavor wise than the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. But it's only, I think it's 101 proof. It's, it's lower proof. It could have benefited from more proof. But flavor wise, very well balanced, very 
it wasn't like Evan Williams, basically, is what I'm trying to say. It was like a Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, like, quality of flavor. But I think the flavor was amped up a bit. But it suffered with the lack of proof, so... Yeah, so it, it was good. I would not pay 125 for it. You know why? I can get two bottles of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for 125 So I would stick to Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. But tasting it... So that's why I recommend the Speakeasy Experience. You get to try um, some things that you may not want to buy, but you want to try, so... That was the that was the end of our um, Sunday night. So we only had two more days left. Um, so the first thing we did that morning, which is Stephen, this is what I want to talk to you about. We went to Peerless. We did their ten thirty a.m. tour. So got up bright and early for that. Um, didn't really know what to expect. I never had tried a. I've tried like one pick of a Peerless rye, but I'd never tried their bourbon. I've never tried like their basic rye. Uh, so I didn't know what to expect. But. Um, Oh, I tried Elijah got 18 and Booker's 30th. Oh, what did you think of the Booker's 30th? I've had that one. Um, um, but Elijah got 18. Oh, yeah, you got to tell me about those. I'm curious to hear how those were. Um, did at the same time. See, yeah, well, I wanted to get it when, before, when they opened because I wanted to do Mictors right after. So did Diz Peerless, honestly, probably the best tour. No, no, not. I, I, I simplified it earlier because I didn't want to give any spoilers. But Peerless was hands down my favorite tour that I did in Kentucky, which is odd because you guys heard, I went to Buffalo Trace, I went to Heaven Hill, I went to Wild Turkey, I even went to Castle and Key, which by the way, Castle and Key was my close second. So it was still up there. But, and Lux, honestly, if you want to know, Peerless was number one, Castle and Key was number two, and um, Lux Row was number three, interesting enough. So um, the, it was a disappointment. Oh, it's a letdown. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. The Electric Car 18. Um, at least you tried it though before you saw out a bottle. Um, and Booker's thirtieth was good, but you enjoy Country Hand better. I think I agree with you, Brendan. I was not. I did like Booker's thirtieth. Um, it was just a little too heavy on the oak for me, and I think Country Ham does it a lot better. So that was just. I mean, personally, I agree with you there. So yeah, we did Peerless. Um, the thing I liked about Peerless was they were so. It felt like a small craft distillery, which they are a craft distillery, but it felt like we literally watched this guy pour yeast into the um, cooker. And go through the whole process of cooking it, and then he like dispensed it into a um, one of the fermenting tanks. So we got to see the whole process, and it was just one guy doing it. They said they had like a small team of like five or six people, I think, um, working in the distillery at a time. So I just I just love that tour. It was we got to see it, we got to see it dump in. We got to try it literally coming fresh out of the cooker. Um, it was just it was such the most hands on experience. I had ever had some slow motion there. <laughs> um, but it just, we got to try the um, the white dog from them, which none of the other distilleries, like I think Jim Beam, they pass it around to smell it, but they actually let us taste it here. Super, super delicious. Buffalo Trace did let us try it, but I think it was their like standard release. It wasn't like fresh off the still. Um, and then we got to see their barreling room. Um, very small for what I thought it would be. Saw a couple barrels from like, I took a picture of this one because I'm like, that's the date we arrived in Kentucky. If this, if they ever release a single barrel, I'm gonna seek this one out. <laughs> um, Stephen, you're drinking your apple crisp peerless. And it, I heard good things about that one. Actually, I think I tried a sample of that one, um, but they didn't have that at the distillery. So here's what, here was the tasting at peerless. We did their bourbon first, um, which I was pleasantly surprised. Honestly, I thought their bourbon was gonna be shit <laughs> because I had heard like it's not worth the price. It's not any good. It's young whiskey. Bourbon it was really really fantastic i didn't buy a bottle of it it's a little high on the price range but it's not like overpriced that much so if you get a chance to try it definitely try it they smell it they sell it in small bottles so do that but that was also the rebel yell i'm gonna try this logic crack before i end the stream though so we tried that then we tried their single barrel no sorry we tried their small batch rye their standard rye release it was good it didn't blow me away. It it was different than like most of the rye I drink is sourced rye. Honestly, I drink like Dickel rye for my cocktails. Um, even some like in my nicer rye is still sourced. So it was nice to try their own rye. Um, it just didn't really stand out to me. Two hundred. That's not bad. I mean, I mean that doesn't sound bad, Brandon. Two hundred for that doesn't sound too bad. But, um, yeah, so we tasted through that one, and then we went to the, we tried two different single barrel picks from Peerless of their rye. So we tried one called, 
one was called The Irishman. That was my favorite. It had like a... I did see where they were coming from. It did kind of had some of that shortbreadiness that like Irish whiskey gives you. Um, single barrels to choose from. I did them blind with the guide. And I was the only person on the tour. Oh, well, that's awesome. No, we only did two. Um, I tried to ask about another one. It was a pretty small group. There was only six of us. So, but he said like, honestly, you know why I think he said that? Because the head of Peerless, I, I don't know his name, but he's like the main guy over Peerless. He's got to start the company was there and he walked in at the end of our tasting so i'm pretty sure he's probably nervous about doing something a little extra because the boss was there so that was also awesome so it was like the whole well-rounded experience i got to try their mash i got to try their new make i got to meet the guy over the company i don't remember his name i really wish i remembered it but um it was just hands down best experience i had small group great tasting and great product so i ended up not um buying anything from there i did like those single barrels but i was trying to budget um yes corky taylor I, I don't know why i forgot that they talked about his whole history yes corky taylor the man himself um walked through the door um great guy very down to earth there was a couple there from florida and he lives actually near where they live so like he was like oh yeah i used to go down to this part and uh god he seems like such a great guy and for having such a fantastic history behind him on the tour, they guide you through his whole life and, like, the war and military school and all this stuff. He's just a, an awesome, awesome guy. If you get a chance to meet him. Um, so, yeah, so I don't think... So, Caleb, I think he may have been there um, because the guy offered if we bought bottles to have Corky sign them and Caleb, he'd walk back to his office and get him to sign up. But he just he just actually didn't... Um, wasn't at the tasting room when we were there. But did get to meet Corky, which is really, really cool. So, highly recommend Peerless. You may not think it's not a major distillery... When you go to Kentucky, you may not think this is something you want to do, but hands down my favorite thing about Kentucky, um, which, like I said, brought me to my next stop along the way. Um, well, you guys might saw a spoiler there. So I went to Mictors Next um, for their noon tour and walked around the gift shop. I saw like the Mictors 10. Of course, I had the Mictors 20 and 25th, like high end top shelf stuff. Never be able to afford it. But on like the standard, they literally had their standard releases. They had their... Mictor's Rye, Mictor's Rye, Mictor's Rye, Mictor's Rye. One of the bottles was Mictor's Toasted Barrel Rye. Just sitting on the casual, like, standard shelf. Um, so I picked it up. I wasn't ready. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it yet. I've never tried this one. Grabbed it, looked at the price. It was 109 so a bit over retail. Um, I think it's like $30 over MSRP. But this came out, I think, 2008, right? A while back. But... I was thinking about setting it down. Okay. I was like, you know what? I don't need this. That's really expensive. I'm trying to save money. This trip's expensive, but I overheard. So I saw one person like I, I said it basically, I set it down on the table to, um, look up if I want it. Cause I only have one hand, so I can only, I can't hold it up and research it. So I said, it, but I said it like right beside me. So like no one can get it. I noticed someone watched me set it on the table and like, he was like hovering around the table. So I'm like, Nope, I'm gonna grab it again. And then I overheard someone else walk in. They're saying, like, looking at the rice, like, no, that's just the regular rye. Oh, that's just the regular rye. That's not it. I think there were two different people there that were seeking this bottle out. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Went in Kentucky, bought it, and brought it home. So I'm not going to try this tonight because I have an idea. I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on this idea. Um, I have the Toasted Barrel Sour Mash. I now have the Toasted Barrel Rye. And a friend of mine accidentally left a bottle at my house of the, the Toasted Barrel Bourbon. So I was thinking next week I could do all three of those side by side. Um, if he allows me a pour, I'm sure he will, but I'm going to ask him. Do you guys think that would be fun to watch, like, all of the Toasted Barrel releases side by side? I think that would be really fun. Um, I'm excited to see which ones I prefer and see how it affects the flavor of each of them. So just curious what your thoughts on that are. I think that would be really fun. But if you guys don't like it, I won't do it. But I do want to try this Elijah Craig barrel before I log off for the night. Thank you guys for sticking around and listening to me ramble. I know this is like a long story, but I wanted to share it. Um, because none of my like friends get this excited about whiskey as I do. So like, I know you guys would get it. Um, yeah. So, okay. You guys like the idea. Cool. Cool. So that was pretty much, we went to Mictors. The tour at Mictors was okay. It was very museum -y. Obviously it wasn't their main distillery. So it was just like very, it was fun, but it, it, it just wasn't on par with, Pe we had just left Peerless, so <laughs> very true, Chris, very true, but I, I don't have people to share it with, so 
Oh, the, yeah, the last distillery we actually visited on our trip was not a bourbon distillery at all. Um, oh, Donnie, what's up? <laughs> it's okay, man. If you want to watch my recap, you can watch this replay. It usually pops up on my channel um, like an hour after I do the stream, so feel free to watch it some other time. Um, I've rambled a lot, but <laughs> um, have had a lot of really good pours tonight, so. Just rinse my glass before I get to the final pour. I might go like 10 minutes over time because I want to wrap up the trip. So if you guys can stick around. <laughs> um, but yeah, we actually went to our last distillery of our Kentucky trip was Copper and Kings. Um, they make brandy. I was actually inspired to go there because I tried their Bardstown, or sorry, Butchertown brandy, which is a cast strength brandy aged in um, bourbon barrels. And it's incredible. I'm not even a brandy person, but it's incredible. So... Highly recommend checking them out. It's definitely a nice change of pace. Their, sim their process is very, very similar. But, um, oh, sorry. I meant to say, hey, hey, Donnie and Diane, if you're there. <laughs> I always forget you guys are usually watching stuff together. So um, good to see you guys. Or if it's just you, Donnie, hey, what's up? <laughs> um, yeah, so Copper and Kings tour was awesome. Um, if you guys don't know much about them, they are in Louisville, Kentucky. They have a beautiful, beautiful distillery there. Very small. Um, they're trying to turn into an event space because they're right near a stadium. So there's like the outside of it there. And then um, this is their one of their stills. Oh, was the autofocus doing something weird? I, I may have a bottle on the way. I'll, fig I'll, I'll check that in a second. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that's one of their stills. This is like their barrel room. So they basically collaborate with tons of different breweries and wineries um, and distilleries, and they finish their brandy in um, tons of different finishes. Um, I, I don't know if I have a photo. I don't have a photo of one um, the ones they had there, but they had one that was finished in rum casks. They had one that was finished in um, American um, single malt casks from Westland, which you guys have seen. I've reviewed them before. Um, they had another one. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I tried the Westland one and it was really, really good. So really cool, interesting collaborations. As you can see, they're using Peerless Barrels, um, working on something there, I think. Um, but it's, 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 they're really involved in the bourbon culture and the beer culture and the wine culture. They're just really, really involved in what they do. So give them a check out. Even if you're not a brandy person, um, check them out. I'm watching the autofocus. I'll see. I may have been trying to focus on one of these bottles, so sorry about that. Um... Yeah, it was just a really nice change of pace. So, oh, this is Elijah Craig. So, what is the story on this one? I don't really. It's barrel select. It's not barrel proof. It's one twenty five proof. So it's a little, a little less or more than barrel proof depending on the batch. Um, what is it? Barrel select. Do any of you know? Let me Google real quick. I'm just curious, like what what makes something barrel select? Gift shop exclusive. I know that for sure. Um, yeah, around eight to nine years old, it's, um, non-age stated, but it was only 30 bucks. So I had to buy it. It's one of those like memorabilia things you got to get. Um, I bought two of them. So one of them will be unopened and one will be my tasting one. So I'm, you guys know, I love Elijah Craig. I think regular Elijah Craig's my go-to, one of my go-to daily everyday sippers. And the barrel proof, of course, is one of my absolute favorite whiskeys in the world. So um oh hey D diana okay i wasn't sure if you were there or not <laughs> so on the nose it's not really jumping out of the glass like i thought it would be such a high proof um i honestly thought it would be more like you know like logic like braille proof is but it's a little it's still got those same notes on it but it's not that overwhelming um rush of ethanol so i'm gonna give it a taste though. i'm really excited about this one but again, it was only because it was 30 bucks and it's like one of those like keepsakes. So I'm not expecting the best, but I'm expecting something pretty good. So Ooh, that's hot. Wow. <laughs> Going from the Rebel Yell 100 to that. Ooh, that finish though is really good. Honestly, so what I think this tastes like, now if you guys have had it, let me know. To me, it doesn't taste like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It tastes like Elijah Craig regular, or even like, I guess, single barrel, but closer to foolproof. So not quite 
not quite um, cast strength, but amped up a bit. So it's has the classic Elijah Craig flavors, but it doesn't have the uniqueness of the barrel proof, if that makes sense. Or the, um, yeah, barrel proof. So curious what you guys' thoughts are on that. Um, this is my first time having it, so. But it's, it's I mean, as a keepsake, it's really cool. Honestly, though, if they have the Elijah Craig barrel proof there, I would recommend getting that over this one. Unless you just want a cool, cute little bottle to take home. Very, very good, though. And the finish it has that finish that I love about Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. That's a dessert. That's the highest proof dessert whiskey I've ever had. <laughs> um, really do like that Elijah Craig. So glad I'm not totally disappointed in that one. So. And that pretty much sums up most of my trip. I mean, the next day we went to the um, Bourbon Heritage Center. We went to Silver Dollar Bar, which has a bunch of Dusties and um, single barrels. A little pricey, though. It was pricier than I thought, honestly. Um, so I ended up with a Weller 107 pick, and I tried uh, some other budget whiskey that I've been wanting to try. Um, then we went around 4th Street Live. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we had breakfast at the Brown Hotel and had the hot brown for the first time in my life. Um, here's a photo of it here. It was very good. Um, it, I, I, I feel like I wanted it to be better, but that's because I'm a Southerner and like I expect Southern food to be delicious. It was very, very good. I highly recommend if you've never had one, this is the time to do it and this is the place to do it. Um, it was just a little too cheesy for me. So it was like melted cheese and like cheese and milk basically make the majority of the, the dish. Um, there is some turkey down there. There's some bacon. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's a little too cheesy for me. And I would have liked a lot more, like, they had, like, literally, like, two whole tomatoes in there. Or maybe been a whole tomato. I don't know. But if they had had, like, sun-roasted or, yeah, sun-dried tomatoes, um, I think it would have taken this, drink, this dish to the next level. I actually had a, um, had a bourbon Bloody Mary, too, which was interesting. At first, I was like, this just tastes like a Bloody Mary. But afterwards, I was like... Oh, I taste the bourbon. It was made with four roses. So, yeah, definitely check out the Brown Hotel if you're there in Kentucky. But just to recap my trip, had a wonderful time. Met some incredible people. Met some new friends. Met some old friends. Um, hanging out with Perry, Ian, Swan, Chad, and Sarah was everything I imagined and more. Um, I... I can't recommend, if you've never been to Kentucky and you're a bourbon fan, I can't recommend it enough. You grow such an appreciation for these distilleries, for these people working in the distilleries that are passionate about what they're doing. Like, I I got that from Peerless. Like, they were so, like, they just talk about it. And Copper and Kings, too. They don't even make bourbon. They make brandy. But the uh, I think he, one of the master, not master distillers, he was like a master master something along the process was just there working and he was like talking to the tour group he wasn't even like a tour guide he was just talking to us like yeah like yeah if you guys have any questions let me know it's just these people they live breathe and drink this stuff so i can't recommend it enough um favorite part was definitely peerless um actually that's my second favorite part favorite part was meeting so many incredible people and hanging out with so many incredible people so I hope to be back soon. Hopefully next time I'm there, I get to meet so much more, so many more of you. Steven, Brandon, Chris, Donnie, Diana, let's just all meet up and like, let's go to Kentucky. So I hope to be back there soon, but overall, one of the best vacations I've had in a while. So yeah, I just want to share these stories with you guys. Um, sorry if it dragged on a bit, but I just get excited about talking about it. Um, it's just such an incredible trip. So um if you don't know what's Bourbon Night, which you probably do, um, check out their channel. They're really cool guys. Guy and girl, couple, whatever. Um, my autofocus is really bad. You're right, Donnie. There you go. It's finally focusing. So that's a little coin. So, yeah. So check them out. Um, check out Perry's. This is my bourbon podcast. I, you guys all know him. I'm just putting this in there for anyone else that's watching the replay. Uh, yeah, so check out those awesome bourbon channels and podcasts from Kentucky and maybe next time I'll see you guys there. So until next time, I'm here to help you drink good whiskey and Kentucky has great whiskey. So cheers and have a wonderful, wonderful night and happy Halloween. I forgot it was Halloween, but happy Halloween. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye.